Hello and welcome to Agri History. Today we will discuss tomatoes. But before we begin, I would like to talk about a tomato breeder named Steve Lowen. He was one of my teachers in Richtown College as well as a major influence on me going into the agriculture sector as a student. It was a research paper on his tomato trials that set me on the path to agricultural science. He's still pulling off some pretty cool research today right now, so I would recommend going to the Richtown campus website and looking at some of his papers. So this video will be not just a video on tomato domestication, but a dedication to Steve Lowen. So sit back and relax and enjoy the origins and domestication of tomatoes. The wild tomato species are native to western South America, along the coast and high Andes, in central Ecuador and Peru, as well as parts of Chile and the Galapagos Islands. If you look at current genetic evidence, our common tomato, Solanum lycopersicum, shares a common ancestor with Solanum pimpofolium and Solanum cheesemaniae. Unlike our domesticated tomato, there is some self-incompatibility in wild tomatoes, increasing the amount of outcrossing that happens as well as genetic diversity. These wild tomato species have many different traits that can be used for breeding purposes, such as salt tolerance, virus resistance, and resistance to certain Lepidoptera insects, i.e. moth larvae. These traits are found in Solanum cheesemaniae, the direct wild ancestor to our tomato has increased moisture tolerance, resistance to various types of fungal disease, including, including fungi that cause leaf spotting, wilt, and root rot. Solanum pimpofolium has traits such as improved color and fruit quality, resistance to insect, nematode, and disease damage, as well as drought resistance. All three mentioned species have use in breeding purposes. Most of these closely related species of tomato which includes about 11 species, perhaps more, can cross-breed with each other, increasing the amount of breeding potential and genetic diversity even further. Although it's been quite a bit of time since tomatoes were introduced to Europe, and then North America, the origin point of domestication is still unclear, and the two main models for how this happened is still being debated. The first model is a Peruvian origin, the second model is a Mexican origin. The researcher Dr. D. Condole looked over many different pieces of data, both botanical and archaeological, to see if he can figure out the origins of tomato. As a result of this research, he suggested that the Peruvian one is more likely. This is because there is no direct records of movement of tomatoes from South America to North America. That can be considered unambiguous. The earliest known names we have of tomato are Mala Peruviana and Palmi del Peru. This suggests direct transportation from Peru to Europe and adds further evidence to the Peruvian origin hypothesis. The Mexican origin hypothesis was first proposed by Dr. Jenkins in 1948. This was made using the fact that there was no existing records of tomato prior to the appearance of Colombia in South America. Dr. Jenkins also suggests that the word tomato came from the word tomato, a Nahua word that means round and juicy fruit. Neither of these hypotheses are conclusive, however, and it may be possible that tomatoes were domesticated twice independently. It was also speculated that the wild cherry tomato found in Mexico was the ancestor to our common tomato, but it was later discovered through genetic tests that the wild cherry tomato is actually a hybrid between wild and domesticated tomatoes. This may indicate an Andean origin, 
Males were probably introduced to Spain via Spanish conquistadors after the capture of an Aztec city in 1521. Due to its resemblance to the poisonous species Belladonna, males were not used as a food source until the late 17th century. Tomatoes, however, became commonplace as a foodstuff in the mid-18th century. Tomatoes at some point also reached England, and from there they were exported to the Middle East and Asia by John Baker. And from there, tomatoes migrated back to the Americas, this time in North America, here, there, and back again. Today, tomatoes are sold as a fresh product, as well as a processed food such as canned soups, ketchup, and tomato paste. In 2009, tomato consumption rose to 20 kilograms per capita on average. Tomatoes transitioned into the greenhouses in much the same way cucumbers did. See the video on cucumbers for further details. Well, that's about it for tomato domestication. Stay tuned for the next episode on agri-history, where we will cover cannabis. See you then!